Welcome back to our Let's Play of uh, Disco Elysium. Uh, I was told over the uh, course of the last three episodes that there was some kind of echoing. I believe I had my mic in omnidirectional mode uh, instead of uh, no, direct mode. So it only so the volume only came from me. So sorry about that. It's probably picking up sounds from everywhere. Um, hopefully this, hopefully changing that fixed it. Um, Last time we discovered a bit about that body that we're here to discover from some footprints. It seems that a, at least eight people carried it. Well, one person carried him here and seven other people accompanied him and it was like a public lynching. And they basically watched him die. So, um, I also discovered that I possibly have a lost love that I was really close to, but uh, lost uh, uh, lost my connection to. Um, um, let's see, tools. What's this? Ledger of failure and hatred. This is the same ledger you found in the trash only worse somehow. It makes you think about the letter, about the woman's handwriting, but not wanting to get out of bed in the morning. It's the letter you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hanging from the board, with the permeables drawer inside. It's barely held together by a clip, then made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Oh, and the cool piece of toilet paper is stuck to the back. Uh, oh, I got an update ready for this game. I'll take care of that later. Uh, inspect it's the toilet just paper. toilet paper. Stick it to the back of the plastic clipboard. You can take it off if you want. Still wet, the toilet paper peels off the plastic easily. All you have to do is shake it off with your finger and voila! The ledger now looks marginally better. Okay, an the aluminium block runs the width of the board biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. I'm not gonna run my finger across it because something tells me I'll uh, hurt myself. Um, I was also told I should be, I should be, um, obviously not for my health since I only have two health, but for my morality, I, I should be okay leaving it with like one damage because uh, there are certain choices that will heal me. Uh, but I'm not going to run my finger across it. A bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard in your hand. It's a sorry sight. They're not exactly white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, Case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. What is in there? What are they about? Work, strife, poverty, the general quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51 this year. The exact number is hard to estimate due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases undertaken, not completed, mind you. Okay. It's the middle of March. You have attempted two cases a week on average. It's two cases a week. That doesn't sound like a good load. Uh, is there, there's mention of a naming convention there? Yes. It appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins. Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. A title, one might say even. One that draws inspiration from snoop fiction and vespertine cop show staples. 
Oh my, and they're written in capital letters too. Yes, all caps. One is called the Next World Mural. Another, the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Another yet, the Unsolvable Case. Others appear more light-hearted. The guys on a couch in an unexpected location, and the murder at the Uka parlor. Even the rare article free collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done. Once you're done inspecting them up close. Huh? Two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it, lest you start making mistakes. In case it's weak, Chris, I've been my low lieutenant. I'm sure I can play with them now. Two? That's a lot. I didn't mean to say you are making mistakes, by the way. That was presumptuous of me. Uh... I burned out, alright. That's okay. We all do, sooner or later. Like a fan of girls, the checkered papers dry in your hand. The handwriting is extremely dense, if mostly illegible. You mean the alphanumeric? Officer, precinct, time of arrival at the scene? Uh, no, I mean non-numeric one. Oh, you Titles. mean the titular? Yes, well, so do I. In our defense, almost everyone in the RCM does. Why is that? It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. Seem to have named a case the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one the man with the hole in his head. That was a real person. His death was real. Still, I named it that to amuse myself. I pray his loved ones never find out. What happened? I, I'm guessing he. Rail spiked through the head. He oh. died. Rails. It was a workplace accident. Oh. I have to open official case. Is there room? There is, for precisely one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. Once all the tasks are accomplished, the case is complete. Uh, what's the paper using the pen Lena gave me? The tasks you've completed flow out of the kind green ape pen in a brash freehand similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple. A language developed for mental rigor and simplicity. Inspect the victim's body. Interview the cafeteria manager. It's not exactly poetry, but poetry would be out of place. Cross out the ones you've already A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it seems to say. And you, and you. Things to be done, and things already done. The composition of reality. This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizen's militia. Now all that remains is to name the case. Lieutenant, have you by any chance named our case? No, actually. Any ideas? Uh, Furies at the home in the mirror? What? Why is that? Oh, because of the, the building and the people are angry. Furies. Yes, well, I don't know. I have to be honest, I'm not experiencing the internal strife that it refers to. And also, could you make it less poetic somehow? Just a normal case name, you know? Think. What would that be? A good normal name? Yes, yes. You know what that normal name is. But it's so plain. Anything else, please. Uh, no, no. I'll go with the hangman. Great. That's great. That's actually what I was thinking too. The hanged man. Good, strong name. We have a very good name for the case now. I'm going to start calling it the hanged man. It's good we sorted it out. Okay. Right. You don't exactly close them, so much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. Uh, can I read the case files now? Uh, plus one from Kim explaining the system. It's proving to be harder than expected. 
You just don't have the intellectual rigor to patch the quilt back together. Try again later. Okay. Possibly yes, easy no. You need to come up with a small archaeological system to reorder the remains of your past works. The moment all they do is fall apart in your hands. Uh, I'll do that later then. Uh, let's look at the yellow. In the back, you see thin, translucent copy of paper. Some neon yellow, some bright red, all covered in boxes, like marching armies. These look like official forms waiting to be filled out. Then rip them from the binder and hand them out, according to type of form. What type of forms are there? Three. The topmost are misconduct fines. The middle ones are station calls. And the bottommost are field autopsy forms. Each is easy enough to make sense of. Alright, so... They give that kid a misconduct fine, but I'm sure you just throw it back in my face. And I did call the station once. You don't have to be an intellectual giant to do police work. A monetary penalization ranging from 20 to 250 real. Severe cases allow for 1,000 real, but that requires special paperwork. The details of issuing these fines are spread out over the rest of the fields, but they appear pleasantly vague. These are quite sinister in turn. They give a date and time for the person to appear at the specified precinct police station. Below the call are the criminal charges you risk by not appearing. A dozen pages of thin copy paper, bright red in color. You see the parameters of a deceased human form waiting to be filled in. Age, sex, condition of internal organs. Yes, all that remains now is to fill those forms and hand them to people. Fines for wrongdoers, interview requests for bad guys, and field autopsies to dead guys. The rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for wear. Being sandwiched between the board and the the acidic stench of rotting food has rubbed off on the cellulose. It now forms the base of the experience. This base surrounded by a faint air of spoiled meat, the stuff of death itself, and then sprinkled liberally with the citrus zest of toilet cleaner. Without resistance or sound, the two panels move against each other. The compartment is now open. Inside, you see two ticket stubs and a handmade postcard. It's slightly, ever so slightly, difficult to breathe once you've done so. The drawer is locked. Blue ink drips from the white pages in your hand. Okay. Oh, that's the, uh, that's the ledger. Uh... Let's see, what do we got? We put the clothes in the trash. Um, oh, I was told that I'm actually supposed to keep doing these. I'm actually researching them. Um, and I get things for them when they're completed. So I'm going to keep researching this. Uh, I'm going to research this even though I lose so much fair. And, uh, white morning. Minus one for authority. Little guy gets further and further away. We'll see yourself from above. You're passed out in the blue tiles plastic room floor. Even from the distance, you can see the eyelids flutter. At mention of what? A great white object letting out its sweet smell, like a lily in the valley. Little man's forgotten its name, but still remembers the feeling. And looks, and look, he moves. The feeling animates him. He instinctively reaches out for feeling's best friend, a bottle of Commodore Red. He puts on disco clothes and gets smaller and smaller. Okay. So I have three, minus three uh, for between two old things and plus one for another, but you know, at least I'll uh, get something from all this venture. Alright. Uh, let's talk to the kid about the clothes. If he's still here. He is. Look, there's Kuno here. 
Found your shack? You found Kuno's secret door to Kuno's secret shack! It was closed for 5,000 years! How the fuck did you get in? I face shifted through the roofing material. Shit! Get the fuck out of here! You can't do that! You can't do that, Kuno! He's trying to fuck at you again! Pigs can't displace me! Can't do that teleport shit! Yeah. How did you like it in there, pig old boy? Kuno's got a lot of cool shit there, right? Can I get into the harbor Of course you wolf? fucking can! How do you think Kuno made all the doggy boys his gimps? Just gotta fly, pig! Uh, is that it? Not for you, pig! Kuno can't wait to see you get all scared and shit your pants! Kuno can't wait to see you shit your fat pants! That's all there is to it, then. Don't be a pansy. Just jump. Gotcha. Good call, Pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. Uh... Okay. The That's fuck the about it? Your test- Get lost! Yeah? The kingdom of Kuno? The fuck do you want with it? Uh, the ladder. Ever climb it? Look at that fucking shit! You're trying to get Kuno killed! So you say that that ladder is unclimbable? What does Kuno know? Kuno's not a fucking acrobat! The lieutenant takes a quick note in his notebook. It's a trap, Kuno! Don't climb it, Kuno! Okay, what's in the greenhouse over there? Dunno. Kip that gardener used to work there. Kip is a pejorative term used to describe people of South Seminese or Eri Oppergite descent. It used to be a common first name among the Eri Oppergites of Ilmara. Not so much anymore. Yeah, that I caught that too. Used to work there? Yeah, that's what Kuno said. She couldn't handle the heat, so she took off. Kuno oh. can take it. Oh, he's talking about the, the nothing to Kuno. Okay. I mean, the young woman the wor uh, whirling in rags, the Look, gardener? Kuno doesn't explain shit. Kuno just says shit. <laughs> yeah, her. What was she doing in the greenhouse in March, anyway? What kind of gardening is done in March? Uh, I should ask her about it. Yes, it seems suspicious. You don't like things being like that. Suspicious. Okay. And how did the dead man's clothes get in the trash? Yeah, Kuno doesn't know shit about that. That shit is beneath Kuno. I need to know. It could be lead to investigation. Some may have tampered with the murder listen, scene. Listen, listen. Kuno doesn't care about this small time shit. Just listen. Kuno saw what you did there, dumpster diving. Sad shit. Kuno could hook you up with some sweet rags. Shit like Kuno's wearing. Your size, good price, 500 real. Uh, wait, I asked you about what happened to his clothes. You must have seen them lying around. Look, Kuno ain't seen shit lying around, except for that up there. Now you want performance gear or not, Grandpa? The lieutenant remains silent, but his expression couldn't say, I told you so, any louder. I know, I don't want anything about the... Uh, you... No, Kuno, you don't know anything about the tampering of the investigation. I already Whatever. Kuno was trying to help you, but you're too fat for fun anyway, pig. There's also this mug in the trash. The fuck? A mug in the trash? Is this about the fucking clothes again? Uh. Yeah, Kuno sees where this is going. Kuno's got that fast brain. You saying you picked it after the mug fucker? Cause he's the clothes fucker? Uh, I wouldn't put it so eloquently, but sure. I can't hear you, Kuno. Speak louder, Kuno. That's exactly what I'm saying, Kuno. Someone has tampered with the crime scene, cleaning, cleaned some of it up. Shit, that's Ted. Someone's going to the beat down basement, huh? Mug guy gonna get tied to the radiator. Kuno doesn't know who put that shit in there, and if he did, he wouldn't squeal. But if you find out, maybe you can... Tell the Kuno who it was. He's curious. 
He likes putting two and two together here. Stop turning into a pig, Kuno! They're trying to get you hooked on the snitching! Get away from my Kuno! Who is this girl? Yeah, get your bacon shit away! Kuno doesn't like to be seen with the popo! Get your shit done and out of Kuno's face! Yeah, uh -huh. whatever! Kuno doesn't give a shit! Okay. Kuno doesn't fucking... Alright, so I got a level. I just noticed... I just re remembered that. Um... Ask the gardener about gardening in March. I could raise my empathy... If I, if I raise my empathy, that's two things I could try again. Um, speaking with Kuno and talk, talking to Tommy. So why don't I do that? Well, I don't know. My empathy is already up to four. Uh, hmm. What else could I raise? Encyclopedia is one, logic is one, rhetoric is one, and which chemistry interfacing, rhetoric. You know what? Screw it. Let's do it. If it's a mistake, I'll suffer for it later. Alright. Let's try Kuno again. Fuck, does Kuno care? Legendary, but it's only 28%. But let's try it. What's going on is an ungovernable, like you don't have enough on your plate. You feel a sudden surge of self pity coming on. Get your snout out of Kuno's ass. Kuno knows how hard Kuno pushes it. Kuno pushes it hard level. You should give up, Popo, or the Kun will keep fucking it out of you. Are you okay, Kuno? That went wrong. He took it as a compliment. Then he had a minor seizure. Okay. Kuno does. Alright, let's, uh, what was the other thing? Uh, talking to this the dude over here. I'll eventually get around to taking that potty down. But now I have two new people to talk to the gardener and this guy. You're, you're the. You're Tommy, right? Stuck in the rain in a traffic jam, man. What's on your mind? Ease into it. Don't go too far. I'm okay. Maybe the full on. All right. Well, I'll try. Maybe later. It's raining again. It was clear just an hour ago. Uh, what have you been doing in your greenhouse in March? Well, uh, this might be the last snow we get. At least I hope so. Snow has nutrients in it. Helps everything green up in the spring. At least that's what my grandma always told me. Yes, think about the cute grandma, not the weird snow. Okay. Uh, visual calculus. Squint your eyes and look at her intently. Disingenuous grandma. Stop looking at her. Look around. What do you see? Traffic jam, the plaza, the entrance to the yard. That's right. And the canal, the bookstore, the harbor gates. This is a great vantage point for keeping an eye on you. No, of course not. I don't understand what this is about. She looks towards the yards and her expression The kid did this, right? The red-haired rat? Can't say a sentence without me. Or keep. He's always giving me trouble. Uh, talking about Maybe him, yes. you shouldn't be. I mean, you do your job, but that kid is beyond help, and he certainly won't help you. You've been resting here for quite a while, haven't you? Yes, I'm tired. I understand. The RCM isn't welcome here, and the locals want to keep an eye on us. There's silence. 
the smallest of smiles. That's okay, Miss. Do what you have to do. I think we're done here. Let's go. Okay. Alright, so she's she's sitting here to keep an eye on us for the locals. Gotcha. Makes sense. Uh, let's go talk to... Well, let's go get the body now, if we can. Okay. Uh, I'll be a story. Okay, the finger pistols is going up really fast. White morning is going down really slow, but what are you gonna do? Um, items. Can I not use them? Or just having them might be enough? There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse. Oh, it's still man. only 8% of is all pneumonia. it does now. The pneumonia only makes it worse. The combination forces tears out of your ducts. You manage to keep it in once. The second time, not so much. Okay. When the vomiting is done, your cheeks are wet with tears. Pneumonia didn't help at all. No does the win right now. The weight is reassuring, like a crenel on solid fortifications. Pat, pat, pat. I've seen strong men turn themselves inside out for hours. You are facing tough odds here. Alcohol withdrawal makes it considerably harder. Can't we do something else? Uh, yeah, I want to solve something else. Oh no. Why can't I keep it in if I've been a cop my I've whole life? I've seen captains puke their guts out. It never gets easier. You never get used to the smell. Every Monday is cadaver day. Throw it, investigate. Throw it, initial autopsy. Throw it, baguette. Then drive to the station. Maybe throw up on the way there, if you didn't bag the thing tight enough. Oh, you seem to be fine. I think I've lost my sense of smell. A white lie. Not being hungover helps, too. Okay. No. This is a two-man assignment, because it needs two officers to complete. I need your help. You need to get your shit together. Uh... We should go talk to the locals. Find something else to do while the wind changes. It's pretty bad right now. Okay. You've gained a thought. When this dialogue is over, go to your thought cabinet and internalize it for special bonuses and effects. Okay. Give it half an hour. Get yourself together. Then come back and have another go. Okay. So right now I can't really take care of the bot. Whip. Uh, and complete shit compressor thoughts. Your shit is a part, and it's rather unbecoming of a cop and a human being. Uh, it's supposed to be the opposite of that, together, compressed in a small area. <laughs> to achieve a solid level of shit compression, squeeze your butt cheeks together for 30 minutes. Do something similar to the two hemisphere of your brain. Talk to people, maybe that'll help. Uh, it doesn't give me any bonuses. Um, I'll get rid of this one for now. Put this one. And that only takes 30 minutes, so... I only have to kill 30 minutes. Let's go see if we can get into that one room. Well, there are people over here I could talk to, right? Like this lady. Or child. Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. The young girl with chubby red cheeks waves to you smiling. Her nose is red from the cold. Are you oh. interested in a new and exciting book? 
She wants her feet to feel warmer. Uh, what kind of, uh, kind of store is this anyway? It's a bookstore, sir. We sell books, postcards, and some board games. It's called Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses, little girl. Uh, let's that walk. is a book. They have stories inside them. It's like someone told you a story in a really long letter. What? Why don't I know what a book is? A What's postcard a is a small cardboard picture. You can write a few words on the other side and send it to your friend or beloved. She is unfazed by your questions. She would consider it impolite to point out any perceived weirdness. Board games are like little games on a table, made to pass the time. There are several different ones, but sailors here mostly buy cards. My pleasure. Anything else you'd like to know? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. My name is Annette, sir. My mum, her name is Plaisance. She owns the store. She's inside, minding the register, or organising the stock. She gazes at the window, then suddenly jolts her eyes wide as if Feel free to step in and browse our wares. You're saying hair and cold because... I'm signalling that the store is open. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. A sudden gush of wind turns the pages of the books on the counters. She covers her face, smiling. But uh, she's cold. A good trooper already, learning the value of hard work. I can help, but, uh... You're cold. Can kind I of you to offer, sir. What could you do to help her anyway? Yeah, that's. I guess that's true. Thank you, sir. I'm happy to help Mum out with the store. Uh, shouldn't you be in school or something? I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help Mum keep this place running. Uh. Mum says it's necessary to do both, because it builds character. Mum says a proper worker is dutiful. That's how you get ahead in life. You succeed. There is stress and unease behind these words. She's reciting etiquette. Yeah, I can tell. Uh, how's the business going? Mum says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first. There's talk about this house being cursed. Behind her, the window has been boarded up. You sense the boards creaking. Twisting for a second, and some kind of doubt in her tense shoulders. Uh, cursed? In what way? Cursed in the way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. That they all go... Uh, bankrupt? Exactly. But we've been doing fine so far. We can go into the bookstore and ask about the case. But I don't see much more to look into him. Yes, please do look at our wares inside. The postcards and board games you asked about are also there, sir. Um, what do you know about this failed Nothing business? Nothing really, sir. Mum doesn't allow me to sneak around in the back rooms or the cellar. I don't really know what's there. Uh, what is, how does this curse manifest? It does not manifest itself in any way. It does not exist. I liked it better when we were talking about whether it's appropriate to stand out in the freezing <laughs> weather. But the plasmatic no manifestations. Uh, anything else you wanted to talk about, sir? Maybe I can tell you about some of our books instead. Okay. Crime fiction is about murders or burglaries or things like that, and the work of a policeman or a private detective who's trying to solve a crime and catch the criminals. It's exciting to people, I guess. They get to imagine dangerous things. And it's kind of like a puzzle, where you can guess who the criminal is, or how the good guys are going to catch him. He's from myself, you don't by the way. look much like a policeman. She examines yours to find something policeman like. Oh, what does a cop look like? Didn't mean to offend, sir. Sorry, sir. It's just that you don't look like Dick Mullen. What's oh, so a book cover in which you see snapping? The Vespertine officer stands grimly over the body of a dead woman. Uh, it's not your body, it's, part of it. it's your point to your head. Head? Yes. Not head, child. 
heads. heads. Flexibility. There are millions of different people out there, and you have to get into their heads. Sometimes you gotta be a killer to Isn't catch them. Isn't that very little. dangerous? Policemen live and breathe danger, little girl. Mullen obviously lacks the chameleonic Unlike skill. you, sir. He's just a fictional character. He's no match for you. Maybe you can show me some real police work, sir. Like in the books. Uh... What is romance? It's the type of book where there's a rich lady and she has to choose between the good man and the bad man. Or there could be a story about a poor lady getting a rich man. It's about man and lady business, sir. I haven't read many of those. Maybe you should ask Mum. Mm-hmm. I'm sure she can help out. Anything else you're curious about? It happens, but usually the guy gets rich in the process, or should actually be rich himself, but has lost his family property unjustly, like during the revolution or something. Those are unhappy books for most of the pages. People sad about what they have lost, but then it all turns out just fine in the end. These are not very common. You can't have a choice between bad and bad. Nobody wants to read a story like that. Well, maybe then it's fine. Maybe if the lady then decides not to pick either, because she doesn't need a bad man. Yes, that would be interesting. That's really not a proper romance story. That's more like everyday life. Not in romance books, sir. These are about nice and pretty people, and everyone is happy in the end. Maybe some about other books? Oh, kings and queens and generals of old, or artists and writers, or musicians, those kinds of people. There's usually something extraordinary about them. I think that's why people read them, to find the secrets of their fame. Seems like most people who read those books fail to get more famous from reading them. But it does make the famous people more famous. Yeah. Ah, uh, fame sounds delicious. And it's for vain people. Why would they do that, sir? Uh, hmm. Why indeed? I'm just an old tire top. What do you smell? You're not that old. Maybe you'll do something really important. Something that wows the world. You're very kind. Yes, sir. Except from her vacuum cleaner. Alright. Composure. Okay, I'm going to do something now. Oh. It's challenging, but I have a hard chance. From anxious body language, she's cold and afraid of curse. The girl keeps her hands folded, hidden. Why is that? Why do you keep your hands folded? What do you folded? mean, sir? She knows where this is going. Well, you don't need to be worried. I'm here to help. You can show them to me. She looks around anxiously. Her hands remain folded in front of her. She doesn't want to show them. The lieutenant stands by, looking at the two of you with little interest. A facade of true professionalism. He is far more intrigued by the situation than his poise reveals. She brings out her reddened hands. Her nails frayed, nearly chewed down to the flesh. Bite your nails. And you knew this from me keeping my hands folded? A few other hints. Well, that proves nothing. Anyone could do an easy deduction like that. Not more, but I can figure out why you bite your nails. I got a few reasons in mind. She nods, half provocative, half enthusiastic. It's been like on the fingers, chewed on nails means you're recycling. Uh, Maybe so, sir. Okay, I know it's a bad habit, and I shouldn't. Either way, uh... Hope you went this it was okay, you. sir. <laughs> still There's more that can be achieved here. Ask her to do the same. I uh, think so far I do better. 
to do something about me. Sober. Oh, okay. The lieutenant does not flinch at the comment. He does not flinch even a single bit. He is intensely not flinching. It takes effort. Uh... Because you usually aren't. Yeah, about that. Uh, also said my head I'm hurts. sorry, sir. I hope things get better soon. We must simply... There she stands, swaying on her feet, assaulted by the early spring breeze. She smiles at you. The whole situation suddenly feels familiar. Somehow, there's something you're missing. Uh, okay. Suggestion. What is... What are you missing here? Why does this feel familiar? Because you know each other. She's been talking to you so openly because you've talked before. Oh. Uh, so you know me. Um, uh, we've yes, met before. I stand in this spot all the time. She sways back and forth. You've been running feet. around all week without your shirt on, sir. Apologizing to everyone. I don't really understand what you've done wrong. Can I ever talk to you? Of course. You've stopped by a few times. You certainly look better than the last time I saw you. Ah. Uh, thanks. I'm yeah, trying. Yeah, I can see. You don't have party eyes anymore. Party eyes. Yes, of course. That makes sense. I'm not surprised children have seen you running around with party eyes on, he thinks. Not at all. Party you know, like a cat in the dark. All big and wide-eyed. <laughs> it certainly looks odd on a man. Yeah, I bet. The swiveling eyes of a loony drug addict. That is what she meant. You were probably going into. Fuck yeah. You should get some party eyes right now. Snap those sequins on you, boy. Oh, baby. That's not what you have to worry about. Worry about the important thing. Ah. Uh. Why didn't you tell me you knew? You I didn't know anything. I had to do that. Uh, thanks, I've learned something about myself. I'm glad today. I could help you, sir. Anyway. Volumetric shit compressor. Bizarre scientific news from Revachol West today where a police officer's shit has been observed at a pressure of around 495 gigadecimals. These metallic hydrogen levels of shit togetherness were thought to exist only at the center of collapsing stars, not law officials. It remains to be seen how long the shit singularity lasts. Okay, cool. Uh, all endurance white checks unlocked learning cap for endurance um, raised to four. Cool. All right. So do I... Do I have to equip that anymore? I guess not. I could forget it if I wanted to. All right, let's put this back on. Oops. Okay. All right, so I should be able to get the body now. Let's try at least. There he still is, looking right through you. Right, now my chances of doing eyes. it are high. The body below is entirely dedicated. Ha ha ha. Again, the corpse laughs at you. Damn. Pus dripping from its mouth. You will never be able to hold it in. It's always too much. Okay. Every time it happens, it gets worse and worse. There's nothing more to throw up now. 
All that's left is crying and convulsing dryly at the same time. Okay. <laughs> Even though I got my shit compressed. Oh, I'm at a loss as well. I could swear your shit was together, detective. Sometimes even that is not enough. Life is unfair. <laughs> what do I do now? Officer, you just need to be stronger. Learn to keep it in long enough for us to work. There's nothing else to do. You can open this white check again by going to your character sheet and spending a skill point to upgrade your endurance. Gain new skill points by exploring and completing side tasks. Alright, I'll do that. It's okay if you don't make it today. The bloated corpse isn't going anywhere. All right, let's check. Uh, let's check the shack. Before I forget that it's here. Empty tube of magnesium, magnesium supplements. Silver plate with trace of bone yellow Be powder. Be still, my beating heart. It's amphetamine. Sweet amphetamine. The lieutenant isn't studying the powder in the mirror. He's studying you. There's a good vague way to ask where he stands on drug use. Professionally, I mean. Uh... Perhaps not. This is below our pay grade, detective. However, See that ladder there? It's probably another way into the industrial harbor, no? A secret path the local kids use. Okay. Right. Get, get out of the way or get fucked up. Uh, some money. Uh, I've almost got the 130 I need. First pig's head, it looks mummified. Can't get to that yet. These barrels are full, half full of rainwater. Well, let's see if I can get to that. Excuse me. Doorway is going to collapse soon. Restoration pillars keep the ruins together. Uh, what is this? Postcard. Postcard depicts an ill-advised residential area overlooking the Jamrock Quarter. Uh, Thirteen-story buildings line the hillside like sarcophagi, an ominous fog already rising from beneath. These are the last boom years. In 39, the project fails catastrophically, leaving behind an op um, opiate and hepatitis B infested slum. Uh, good to know. But it's worth 13. Quite 13, anyway. Not worth much. Uh, more money? I can pay off the guy now. If I want to. See if I can go up here. Like this, uh, I could point to this. Oh, I see. Right. Uh, the controls are a little finicky right here for some reason. Okay. 
looks like someone left his tarpaulin cloak hanging on the railing here. Yes, it's probably yours. It bears the RCM insignia, and you have a habit of being careless with your equipment. You could probably make the jump. You look like you've done some track and field in your day. The wind is aggressive up here. The lieutenant looks at the enormous crane towering in the distance, over the container yard. The look in his eyes is a mix of the engineer-like interest and the wonder of a six-year-old seeing a horse for the first time. That machine is a Kvalsund 1020 HK. Is it? Kvalsund makes a lot of heavy equipment, but this is phenomenal, even for them. But I digress. We were focusing on your cloak here. Uh, he looks at the sad piece of fabric flapping in the wind. What are we doing? We are awfully close to breaking into the industrial harbor. They are bound to have information for us. I thought that was our intention. Or it could be that we are just exploring. Looks around, wind rustling. He's thinking you've forgotten where you are again. The cloak? I do think it's yours, yes. As to whether you should go for it. It's over the ledge, it co the cloak well, came up low. It doesn't seem too dangerous. Two meter stops. Whenever you're ready to do it, I'll be right behind you. The cloak looks like a bag of goodies floating in the wind. Who knows what its pockets may hide? My Solvay Ferrer is minus two right now. I only have a three percent. So I'm not going for it now. Unfortunately. So. So I have. So yeah, I only have like 3.9 bucks, I think. I don't know if the decimal means. Look at this one. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll think about going into the industrial yard later. But not right now, because I can't make that. I do have to talk to the guy again about the clothes, so let's go do that. The next level I get up, maybe I'll uh, try and get composure. Oh, that's right. You can also go into those other rooms that are here. I believe. Dishes are drying, they smell chemicals and pine trees. Aroma, spices, alcohol, tomato hangs in the air. A thin man is smoking below an exhaust hood, occasionally sipping from his mug. This must be the Whirling's cook. As you step in, he nods toward the table and says something in a completely foreign language. The only words you can make out are Garanzi and Kubek. Okay, it's definitely not his name. Whatever you do, please don't call him Garanzi Kubek. Please, uh, okay. it's not funny. Okay, well, sir, I've got a few questions. The man issues. puts his cup down and replies something, his left hand drawing arcs in the air. Uh... You got some impressive pots. He smiles and bangs his ladle against each of his pots in turn. It's almost like music, especially with the sounds of assorted dishes boiling and simmering on the stove. Huh. So I can't communicate with him because he doesn't seem to speak English. You see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. You immediately feel drawn to the color. Blue is for mystery. You do? It's a door in the back of the kitchen. Why do you care where it leads? Uh... Out of duty, we might find something pertinent uh, uh, for the investigation. Mm. 
Yes, I suppose it's worth seeing if we can get in. Just to be thorough, as a side investigation. <laughs> the door in the main investigation will merge into a stereo investigation. If you say so, Gart is the person to ask about this. The cafeteria manager. The cobalt blue surface feels rough to touch. The stainless steel door is flush with its frame on every side. Old cobalt paint, rough on the fingers. 40, 50 years since this was painted, maybe. The door does not budge. Okay. I still need to, I need to talk to the guy about that, too, now. Well, I could have swore I could get in here. Maybe not? I don't know. Oh, hello, you're new. It's all about money, you know? Spend money to make money. Money's what really matters. You say money you can't buy your happiness, but it just means you don't have enough money. Uh, you have to invest your money wisely. You can buy stocks with money. Uh, then you can use the stocks to make more money. Then you'll have enough to, to make it go over to make new money. Real say the graveyard where a tired old men can go to rest. Money literally turns, that makes the world turn. The law of money is just like the laws of nature. Unpaid labor doesn't net you any, la any money. There's no such thing as free money. Money is all about numbers. Wow, this guy just goes on about money, doesn't he? Money is actually all about trust. It's all about money, you know? I spend money to make money. Money's what really matters. Okay, he's he's going around circling. Can I help you? Uh here's your trash container. Thanks. Here. I hope you found what you were looking for. I found the victim's clothes. How strange. I certainly didn't put them there. Uh did someone on your staff have put them there? Sylvie had the keys before I got here, and I can vouch for her. I can vouch for all my stuff. None of us would tamper with the crime scene. Okay. Who else is keys? The trash, trash collection service, CS Municipal. I don't see why they would put anything in the trash, though. Ah, the elusive CS Municipal. I doubt we'll be able to track down who I sent here last and when. This will have to be one of those little threats that solves itself down the road. Sure. Thank you, anyway. Uh... Yes? I see something here. What thing? Saw a sign that said the mess hall was reserved for the Union. Yes, yes. not the whole damn Union, thank God. Just the, Just nastiest, the nastiest and, and loudest, loudest faction. faction. Okay. They come here in the evenings. Dumb, unruly types. Think they're big shit. But they're good customers. They place big orders and always pay on time. We should find out who this Lord Faction is occupying the booth. Loudness means talkative, and we need info. Okay, how do we find them? We don't. We have to wait. They'll show up sooner or later. Men get hungry, even striking men. If not today, then they'll be here tomorrow. There are these things called days. You sleep between them. He's saying they'll come after you've slept. Just making clear you got that. Okay. There's a mysterious blue steel door in the Oh, yes, that door, sure. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's just a door. Uh, do you know what's behind it? Do you have... No, I don't have a key. I don't know how to get there. And I don't care either. It's not like I've been wondering about it for ten years. It's just the frit warehouse, probably. Or some boring storage space with a bunch of old junk and dust. Junk and dust. Runs his finger on the counter to check for dirt. He's attempting to maintain an air of indifference. It's absolutely not convincing. I think you'd like to know what's 
back there. Fine, okay, okay. A, little. a little. But my job my doesn't leave me time for wondering about one locked door in one of the cafeterias I manage. So I haven't opened it. I have cleaned the whole place a hundred times over, though, after the animals. And I haven't found a key, so good luck with that. What? By the way, you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. Okay. So what's the money? Yes, on? have you got it? How much do I owe you? A lot. A lot, lot. For the room, drinks, and broken window, So yeah, I only have 5.55 and I need 130. Like what? I was rarely enjoying talking about... Alright. Well, that's it for today. Uh, I'm actually gonna see really quickly if, if the woman is still in there. The door is closed. Right now. Alright. So, until next time, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a like, share, comment, subscribe. It always helps me out. Something on the table. What's on the table? Let's see, I don't know. Uh, when we come back, we'll uh, continue to explore and work our way to eventually getting that body down. I tried. I really tried to get it down this episode, but it just wasn't happening. So, until next time, thank you very much for watching. Have a good day, and take care.